Now we're going to look at the periodic trends, and this is what we need so that we can finish that lab that we did last week. Periodic trends. So there's some trends in the periodic table, and one of them is atomic size. How do you define atomic size? There's different ways to define it, um, but basically it's the distance between the outermost electrons and the nucleus. So we're basically thinking the radius of an atom. How big is it? Okay. There are trends. <coughs> Some of them intuitively make sense, others need some explanation. The first one is one that needs explanation. If we go across a period, meaning from left to right, like we would read in the periodic table, the atomic size decreases, and that is counterintuitive on the surface. The reason is that the size of an orbital is going to depend on the principal quantum number. As you're going across from sodium to magnesium to aluminum to silicon all the way over to argon, the principal quantum number is staying the same. It's three for all of them. It's the same skin of the onion. It's the same layer of skin. So it's not getting bigger. But what's changing is that the number of protons in the nucleus is going up, which makes more attraction for the electrons. So you look at, um, I think I, no, yeah, I thought I had a periodic table right there, but I didn't. So I did this part when I was half asleep last night. So let's look at sodium. How many, how many protons does sodium have? Eleven. Eleven protons, eleven electrons. And those 11 electrons, where are the valence electrons? What level are they in? N equals 3, right? And then let's look at, um, let's look at argon. Argon has 18 protons and 18 electrons. Yeah, 18. I just really don't. I'd like a psychologist to explain that to me, how I can say one number and write a different number. My hand is not connected to my brain. Maybe that's why it is. Argon's valence electrons are in what principal shell? Three. They're both in the same row in the periodic table. Their valence electrons are in the same basic level. Okay, So that's going to be roughly the same distance from the nucleus. So you might think, well, they should be the same size then. But argon has 18 protons pulling on the electrons. We've got this attraction between the positive, nucle nu nucleus, positive nucleus and the negative electrons. Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. And so we have more pull on those electrons in the argon than we do in the sodium. So you have things that are roughly the same distance, but now the charges are greater. There's going to be more attraction, and so what it does is it actually pulls the electrons in a little bit. As you go across, the atoms get a little bit smaller, and that's counterintuitive. They're Pardon me? Uh, this is they're compressing. Yeah, they're compressing. They're getting squished in. Okay. Going down a column, like if we look at lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, the valence electrons are now in higher, increasing principal shell levels, right? They're going from 2 to 3 to 4. Each of those is bigger, right? We talked about the shape and the size of the s orbital. The 1s orbital is a sphere. The 2s orbital is also a sphere, but it's a little bigger. And the 3s is a little bigger, and each one gets a little bit bigger. So going from sodium to potassium, going from the 3s to the 4s, it's going to be bigger. So as you go down, the atoms get bigger. And that makes sense. It's like, well, sodium's got 11 protons and 11 electrons. Potassium has 19. Yeah, we would expect those to be bigger because it's got more stuff. So going down, they get bigger, but going across, they get smaller because of this increasing charge on the nucleus. So here's an illustration. Again, we've left out the um, transition metals because they're squirrely, and they don't fit our, our things very well. 
but as we as we look here period two as we go across they get smaller and down here um, period six as we go across they get smaller because of that increasing charge on the nucleus pulling them in if we go down any of these groups we see that the atoms get larger because we're adding electrons the core electrons are filling up and then the valence electrons the ones on the outside are in a higher shell and so that it makes sense that they're bigger so since they're getting more dense as it goes um well the the density of the atom itself mm -hmm would increase as you go across. We don't usually talk about atomic density because um, that would be something that's uh, not necessarily related to the density of the element itself. So then we can ask you questions like this. Choose the larger atom in each pair, lead or polonium. And you don't need to know what their what their names are to do this but we need to find PB so here's PB and here's PO which one's bigger lead because it's to the left um, rubidium or sodium which one's bigger rubidium because it's the one on the bottom right Tin or bismuth? Here's tin, and I kind of obliterated bismuth. Is he down there? I think he is down there. So we might think, well, hmm, that's a little hard to, because we've got opposing trends there, right? Because going across, bismuth would be smaller than tin. And yet, going down, bismuth, bismuth would be bigger than tin. So, which is more important, the pull of the nucleus or going out in the next level? And I would say going out into the next shell is more important, and so that would be bigger. Fluorine or selenium? So, here's fluorine and here's selenium. Here we would expect fluorine to be smaller on both accounts because it's higher up in the periodic table and it's also to the right. So selenium will be the larger. Now, a que questions like those, I wouldn't ask you letter C. I wouldn't ask you to gauge between opposing trends, but the, the other three, those would be perfectly good exam questions. Or give you three or four elements and ask you to arrange them in order of increasing atomic size or decreasing atomic size. Any questions about atomic size? There's also a trend in ionization energy. You see, we graphed these things, didn't we? And now you can go back and look at those graphs, and now you can answer those questions about them. What is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the energy required to make something into an ion, and to do so by taking an electron away. So to make a positive ion, you have to pull an electron off of an atom, and that requires energy. There's a trend in this as well. The ionization energy increases as you move to the right. Um, removing an electron, this, this is how you can remember that. Removing an electron from a group 1A element gives it a noble gas configuration. If you take an electron from sodium, is it going to be super upset about that? No. Because it's like, well, hey, you took my electron. You know, you had to pay me for that. But I've got this noble gas electron configuration now, so it's, it's okay. So the metals are going to give up their, more, their electrons more easily. What about chlorine? Is chlorine going to want to give up its electron very easily? No. So chlorine says... I'm not going to let you take my electron. I'm looking to get one more. Okay, I really want one more. It's really trying to find and, and attract an electron, so it's going to be much harder to take it away. So that's the sort of superficial understanding. So removing an electron from, no, from a group 7 does not give it a noble gas configuration. So when you're comparing within a row, like sodium and chlorine, sodium has the lower ionization energy. It's a lot easier to take its electron. 
and chlorine has the higher. Yes? So they all want to work towards being like a noble gas. They're all trying to get to be like a noble gas. Yeah. That's, the, that's a more favorable energy state. Everybody wants to be popular. Except the dorks in the middle. Yeah. Group four. <coughs> Ionization energy decreases as you go down a column. Now, you might notice that the ionization energy trends are the opposite of the atomic radius. Okay? Um, so, as you go from lithium down to cesium, you're in the same group. Why is it easier to take the, um, an electron from cesium? Well, cesium's bigger. Cesium's bigger, its nucleus is farther from the electron. When you take an electron, you're taking a valence electron. It's farther away. It's not held as strongly, and so it's easier to remove. On a small atom, the, the valence electrons are closer to the nucleus, and so the force of attraction is greater, and it's harder to pull them off. So lithium will have a higher ionization energy, and cesium will have a lower one. So here's an illustration of that. Ionization energy decreases as you go down, and it increases as you go across, exactly opposite to the atomic size. So choose the element with the higher ionization energy, magnesium or strontium. Which one has a higher ionization energy, magnesium or strontium? Here's magnesium. And here's strontium. Magnesium. I probably made that too thin, didn't I? I didn't want to, I wanted to stop obliterating things. So there's magnesium and there's strontium. We're looking for higher ionization energy. It's going to be harder to take um, an electron from magnesium. It's a little bit like, okay, so you have a family with one child, or you have me with six children. And would it be easier to snatch a child from a mom with one kid or one with, you know, six kids or 16 kids? With, with more, right? It's going to be easier because how can you possibly pay attention to all these people at one time, right? Where the mom with one is focused on that one child, she's going to notice. I should probably be careful what analogies I use when I'm posting <laughs> things on YouTube. I have never had a child lost, and I don't advocate snatching children. <laughs> okay, I-N or T-E, I think that's indium, don't quote me on that, or tellurium, which one's going to have the higher ionization energy? Well, it's going to be T-E. Personally, I remember these more in terms of atomic size. I remember atomic size decre decreases, so the tellurium's smaller, it's harder to take electrons from a small atom because they're closer. So tellurium is going to be bigger, ionization energy, and C or P, well, carbon's smaller um, because it's in a higher level, so it's going to be harder to take from the carbon is what I would expect you to predict. That's another one of those where you've got opposing trends, right? The going across says it's increasing, and the going down says it's decreasing. And so I won't ask you to do that on an exam. Um, fluorine or sulfur? Higher ionization energy? Fluorine. Is fluorine smaller on both accounts? Okay. One last trend. Metallic character. Um, metals tend to lose electrons. Non-metals tend to gain electrons. Um, so metallic character also has trends. And this follows the same trend as atomic size. Um, I also find this trend to be much easier to remember because of this, whoops, the line. We've got our little stair-step line here. And here we've got the metals. And here we have the non-metals. So guess what? Metals have more metallic character than nonmetals. 
So as we go across this way, we're going towards the nonmetals. Metallic character is decreasing. If we're coming down, we're coming from nonmetals to metals, metallic character is increasing. So then we can we can do problems with this tin or tellurium. S N or TE, which has more metallic character? SN. SN. It's a metal, and tellurium is a is a semi-metal for one thing. Yeah. Okay, silicon or tin? Well, you can kind of answer that without even looking at the periodic table. Tin is a metal, and silicon is a semi-metal. How about bromine or tellurium? Let's see, tellurium, here's bromine. And tellurium is, oh, we already looked at him. Which one's closer to being a metal? Tellurium. <laughs> Selenium or iodine? Selenium, iodine. Iodine would be closer, but I mean, it's not really. That's, that's one of those trends that you're like, yeah. They're really not Because they're, they're both right next to it. So I won't ask you a question like that. What would you answer? How would I answer that? I was afraid you were going to ask that. Okay, so metallic character is increasing, decreasing this way, and it's decreasing that way. Um, I'd probably put more weight into the vertical, and I, so I'd probably guess iodine. Why more weight into the vertical? Because with the size, you're going to higher shells as opposed to just more pull on the electrons. Again, that's one of those, that's, that's hard to predict. Okay, and so I, I don't expect you to predict that. And I wish, I wish I had noticed that and I would have edited these so we didn't have to do it in class either. That's the end of chapter nine. They're just testing to make sure the teacher knows that. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're testing the teacher. And now you can all go and look those up and say, hey, you did that.